So this is my collection of awesome thoughts on the Flyru Explorer LR. As usual, it's behind the zeitgeist, you know, the frenzy about these micro long range quads has kind of peaked already. Um, but I didn't want to just rush out and just make a review and get you to click on affiliate links, although you're welcome to do that at the end if you like. Um, but <laughs> I wanted to really actually use this thing properly and get a feeling for it. And I also, I wasn't sure what I thought of it, even the first few times that I flew. And it took me a little while to settle into what exactly I think is its merits. And I want to try and explain that because I think what is being described by everybody there's a lot of truth, but there's also a lot of stuff that is not necessarily said, and you might just want to think about it before you buy it. So, although there's a bunch of other clones or versions of Micro Long Range now, I got the original OG Dave C version, which I'm really stoked because, you know, Dave kicked off this whole Micro Long Range category, and I think it's just awesome to fly his one of it. Obviously, you should have a look at the other versions out there, and based on what I say, you may even choose a different one. Um, but I'm stoked that I got the flyweight version, so let's go ahead. So most of the reviews are focusing on the incredible alleged 30-minute flight time on four 18650 batteries or similar. Uh, and I say alleged, but honestly, it's true, right? It, it is done. People have done it, and it really is an amazing achievement. But honestly, it's not something that I think I need, at least not with my analog goggle and Insta360 Go setup. And I think that was the big sticking point for me is I'm not really interested in flying out to five kilometers away, 50 meters above the ground. I'm much more interested in skimming one or two meters over the ground and, you know, dodging things, preferably at a bit of a longer distance. But at those low altitudes, there's always going to be obstructions. So the extreme endurance is just not really an issue. And combined with the Insta360 GOES limitations, there's not a lot of merit for me to fly out kilometers and kilometers away for 20 minutes at a time. So now we've determined we're not going very far out anyway. What's actually the point of the GPS and the buzzer and all that? I was skeptical at first, uh, but I quickly realized the GPS is invaluable. Never mind the return to home when you lose your signal. You know, for me, that was not an issue at those ranges, but the magical this way home arrow on your OSD is worth a lot, especially on analog. If you're flying in a new and unfamiliar place in a bunch of uniform vegetation, that little arrow can save you and really help you find your way home. And that gives you a lot of confidence to just go off and explore a new place, which is really what this thing is all about. The uh, speedometer, which you get from the OSD and the, the GPS is also Feels like a bit of a gimmick, but honestly was quite fun to look at on the uh, OSD summary after a flight and see if I'd cracked a new top speed. So the weight is another commonly mentioned factor in reviews. Uh, if you're in a country where the sub 250 gram rule is relevant, then these micro long ranges might be your only option. So the quad is lightweight for a long range, but it's hella heavy for a four inch. So you need to just keep that in mind, right? You can't expect freestyle performance. Took me a little while getting used to, um, but in the end, for those long cruising flowy shots, uh, which you kind of want to do down the side of a mountain, it actually almost helps you fly a little bit more smooth and cinematic, I find. Uh, you do have the issue that you don't have as much power overhead, so you can't just punch out if you get into trouble. You need to kind of pay attention to obstacles that are coming up fast and make sure you plan appropriately. Um, that said though, even though it doesn't have that freestyle performance, I've actually crashed it reasonably hard a few times and it's been fine. I did install the arm braces immediately because I know me and crashing and apparently Flywu knows me as well because they, you know, put in the arm braces and a spare arm in the kit, which is pretty great. So does a quad built for efficiency and with all the additional weight of buzzers and GPS and all that actually make sense for me if I'm flying out to only one kilometer away for five or ten minutes at a time? And that's what I want to, if you'll excuse the pun, uh, explore a little bit. Fortunately, despite or due to a few months of delivery delay, the Explorer arrived just before my December holiday to the pretty dramatic and arid landscape beyond the Cedarburg here giving me the perfect opportunity to really test it. So when I ordered this thing, I ordered the XM Plus uh, FlySky version. 
but in the delay period I'd actually upgraded to Crossfire and I immediately installed the Crossfire receiver in this thing and I can say with 100% confidence I would not want to fly with this with anything other than Crossfire. There is more than enough to pay attention to when flying long or even mid-range so your receiver link is just not one of those things you really want to be spending much time looking at so Crossfire all the way. As mentioned, I'm using the analog version, uh, and even worse, I'm using a non-diversity Fatshark Recon V3 goggles with an Omni antenna. And I think it's worth noting, because this quad is often marketed as a budget entrance quad into long range, which it definitely is, but then it's reviewed by guys with bleeding edge gear, with fancy mixing modules and antennas made from unicorn tears and whatever. and I, I was fortunate enough to receive this quad for review from Banggood, but I still try and approach these things with the budget mindset that I'm sure is still relevant to a lot of pilots out there like me. If you want the best range, you really are going to need a diversity or video fusion setup with at least one patch antenna. I've taken mine out though to at least a kilometer, which is good fun and surprisingly nerve wracking. Uh, I could have gone further, but as mentioned before, I like being kind of close to the ground, and down there the signal is sketchy AF, so I find it funny that I can rip a toothpick around, full send through unforgiving obstacles, and I find it really relaxing, almost meditative, but simply cruising up a mountain galley, wa gully, watching all of my crucial stats and fluctuating video and all the rest of it is absolutely heart-pounding. Kind of in the best way though, it's a whole new awesome experience of FPV. So I guess this brings us back to the battery, right? I don't need a 4S 3000 mAh 18650 pack that weighs as much as a small car. I was much more interested in a little bit more performance and getting my, you know, 8 minutes of flight time or thereabouts in order to fill up the 5 minute recording time of the Insta360 GO. Uh, I was running the 650 and 850 milliamp hour 4S GNB batteries and they were perfect for me. I would definitely, the 850 is my preference. So I've mentioned that I'm using the uh, Insta360 GO and it's not a perfect camera by any means but it's as close to perfect for this drone as is currently available. The 5 minute limit and overheating are mildly annoying to me and just the lack of feedback of what's actually going on on the camera is a bit annoying and the inability to use an ND filter results in footage that's really not as flowy as I would like. Um, I would like to even just see an option for post-processing motion blur included in the app. I think that would be really cool. But these are nitpicks because a camera like this at this price point was unheard of before what mid-2020. Something good actually came out of that year. Uh, but beware the camera is exposed, the lens is irreplaceable and inevitably I think it's gonna get smashed or at least mine did. Uh, the price point of this whole setup is a big factor. Not just the camera but the whole rig and the quad and everything. There's always a chance of losing everything when you're going long range and you have a whole lot less skin in the game if you're flying the Explorer with a 360 go on it than say some big 7 inch with ludicrously expensive um, batteries and motors and a GoPro 11 T10 or whatever the latest version is. So just having a little bit less skin in the game probably will make the, th the whole experience less stressful and more enjoyable. So I know this review has been all over the place and that's why I said at the beginning it was kind of more like a collection of thoughts. Um, but in the end you have to decide whether it's worth spending your hard earned cash on and I just wanted to point out the things that I've been thinking about and some of them came to me only after I'd actually tried it and hopefully this is of value to you to hear them before you do. But my conclu conclusion is that yes it is a pretty awesome quad and it's a great way to try out the long range experience. Uh, and it's, it's beautifully built, it really is a nice piece of kit and it does what it purports to do very well. Um, it's highly unlikely that this is going to be your only and everyday quad. I don't think it's right for that because the compromises for endurance hurt freestyle and durability too much. Um, but if you've got a few different quads for different occasions, then there are some days that, like this week gone by for me over the holiday, where no other quad would have been as good. 
Uh, I was able to go on trail runs with it, I chucked it in my backpack and got some sweet footage up a mountain and it barely noticed it whilst I was running. You wouldn't want to do that with a 7 inch and it's big old batteries and I couldn't have got the same footage with my beloved 3 inch micros. Also I've crashed it at the top of a hill so it made my trail run longer and had to find it which would never have happened without its awesome little independently powered buzzer and a helpful border collie that helped me find it. I was also able to locate myself in a mountainside worth of uniform vegetation after flights using that little arrow which probably also wouldn't have happened without GPS and I would have lost it again. So that's maybe more of an analog issue perhaps if you've got fancy DJI you can see yourself. I'm not so sure. But before trying all of this, I couldn't quite figure out the purpose of the new Flywoo Hexplorer that's just been announced. But now I can see that the extra power at the cost of a bit of battery life and could be perfect, uh, as long as there's a way to get the props out of camera view. I'm not sure about that yet. I really don't think this is the last we're going to see of micro long range at all. I'm excited to follow its development. I think as HD FPV becomes more accessible to the common man and also cameras like the Insta360 Go improve, there's going to be, this is going to get a lot more attractive. I really, really hope that there's a 360 Go version 2 with lens protection and a 20 minute recording or, or even just a remote start and stop of the 5 minute recording would be amazing. So let me know. Let me know what you think about what I've said. Am I talking absolute nonsense that I often do? Uh, or have I missed something out or do you actually agree? I'll put links to obviously all the stuff down in the comments and you know if you if you like it Go ahead and use them and I'd appreciate that. But thanks for listening. Ciao Yeah, it happened again. It's up this gully somewhere. Who knows where. But at least I got the beep. One of the most important features you can have on your drone is a uh, beeper and a border collie. Go find it, Bok. Where is it? Hey, Bok. Where's that drone? You hear the beeping? I can. There it is. Look. On the scraggle, maybe DJI or maybe HD is worth it after all. Found it again. So, if you want to do this micro long range thing and you like flying proximity like I do, you better be prepared to walk or possibly invest in HD so you don't keep getting stuck in scraggle. I'm not quite sure, but. Uh, it's definitely doing me some good for my fitness and old bok here. Yeah.